I'd like to see Exton have bigger buses. And maybe, maybe in time, maybe, maybe one more wheelchair space for wheelchairs. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's definitely a very good idea and very desirable. When I've written to um, Stagecoach about this in the past, the point they make is that because of the, um, the nature of their services in Exeter yes. and the fact that Exeter is quite hilly yes. and they serve quite a lot of residential areas where sure. you've got narrow streets and cars parked, yes. um, that's one of the reasons they use the sort of minibus style bus. They have got bigger over the years, if you notice. They used to be much smaller. Yes. They used to be the short little yes. minibus yes. thing. Yes. They've got a little bit bigger. Um, but I think as technology and, um, and vehicle design improves, uh, they will be under pressure to uh, uh, provide a better service yeah. to people with disabilities and will yeah. certainly keep the pressure up. Yeah, because it's, because um, at the moment, well, I, 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 it's kind of like this pushy thing uh, between pushers, pushers and wheelchairs. And I don't know what is, uh, I don't know, because uh, we've lost our, we've, they, they've taken, they've taken the right, um, I know, sta I know Stagecoach has this idea that wheelchairs take priority, but actually there, there, was, this, there was this thing up in Leeds, um, wasn't, wasn't it, about the, about, about, the, about the right being taken away, and they actually, they actually take it to court to, to say that, to, and, and, and um, we actually got our rights taken away, so I'm not sure it's actually law that we should take priority anyway. Well, wheelchairs should take priority. That's the law under the disability discrimination right. uh, legislation. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, you, you, it's difficult if you have a situation where uh, 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 a mum with a buggy is already on a bus yes, and yeah. somebody with a wheelchair then tries to get on you. Yes, do you, do yeah. you chuck the mum with the buggy yeah, off I don't think you or, or what? Yeah. And there's also the issue around the size of some of these modern buggies, isn't there? Yes. Because uh, yes. some of them are absolutely enormous. They're yes, more like... They are. Um, <laughs> more like um, huge, great big lorry buggies than yes. the little ones that they used to be. But yeah. um, you know, the, the law is quite clear, and it's you know, it's clear to me that um, transport companies are responsible for implementing it. Right. So what? So okay. So it's so it's their responsibility. Their responsibility to. Yes, and if you or if you or anyone else, you know has a problem with that, you know, has a, it has a problem yourself or experiences uh, something like that, you know, get onto the bus company or the rail company and if you yep. don't um, get satisfaction, contact your Member of Parliament. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. That's what I wanted to You're say. You're very welcome, John. Thank you. And you've had a few problems up in London getting here or has it been okay? Well, uh, not getting here this time. It was it was mainly box of tubes that I was yeah. They helped me up, but they wouldn't help me back down. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a challenge in London. I mean, the tube the, the tube network in London is is more than 100 years old, most of it. Yes. Um, and in, 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 in the new stations and on the new lines, you tend to have good... Good, access. Uh, good disabled access and they are gradually over time yeah. uh, improving it and they've certainly in recent years improved their they, signage they and the mapping and information so that you know it, it's easier to find out mm -hmm. which stations are, um, are uh, wheelchair accessible and which aren't yes. um, but you know we're, 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 we're gradually updating or we I say the government of London Transport are gradually updating uh, our essentially Victorian transport infrastructure yes. to make it um, uh, disabled compliant and you know a lot of that is thanks to the dis is equality legislation the last Labour government passed yes. I'm very yeah. pleased that that's now happening yeah thank you no problem thank you yeah and also for Vauxhall I think after after you wrote to them Ben on our supporting supporting John they, they, they are saying that they're going to improve it within the next year yeah, that's very good here. I mean, that is exactly why it's important if people who are experiencing uh, access problems, you know, whether people who are disabled themselves yep. or their carers or assistants or, or family or whatever, yeah. do sure. raise individual issues because, um, you know, sometimes in these big bureaucratic organisations, until um, the, the people at the top are made aware that there's a real problem, nothing happens. So no, no, no. I'm pleased that uh, you know the fact that you raised your concern about Vauxhall with me well, has you. led to a result, and that's a good example of of where you know complaining and raising and something can have an impact or an effect. Right. Thank you.
thank you. Yeah, no. And also just to say, we, 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 we've been in London going to bet at, at Exhale, and the, the, the light railway, Docklands Light Railway, is really good. Very good. It's very good. We see the advantage of the Docklands Light Railway, of course, is, is it's been built in the last couple of decades, and really. And it was built for the Paralympics. And it was built for the Paralympics. So uh, it's obviously been built to a spec which was compliant with the new... Um, disability legislation that the Labour government passed, which is why it's so much better than some of the more antiquated and also the deeper lines, of course, um, where um, that traditionally, you know, have not had lifts. No. Um, oh. uh, and uh, so, you know, they, and they are still a challenge for a lot of the um, underground uh, network. But um, you know, there's no excuse for any new infrastructure or transport system. And you'll see that you know modern trains are much better, yes, they better are. kitted out with 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 loos and disabled access and places where disabled people can, can travel. Indeed. So um, we made a lot of progress in the last 10 to 20 years. Yeah. Ben, I'd, I'd also like to ask you a little bit about social media um, because there, there was there was a bit of controversy after the Syria vote uh, towards the end of last year, and I just just wondered what how you describe social media and the kind of people who contribute to it and what the sort of feedback you're getting well i think you know social media like any technological um change or advance has its plus sides and its and its uh and its negative sides we've seen some of the negative sides with concerns being raised about cyber bullying haven't we of children or grooming and things like that uh or the impact that social media can have in um are uh, fostering uh, extremism. Uh, overall, I think you know social media and the internet is a wonderful thing. It's a democratising uh, uh, thing. So I think it's about getting its impact in balance. Um, I think what what we need to be remind ourselves of, though, is that even now, with you know the widespread use of of Facebook and Twitter and other social uh, media, that it can be a bit of an echo chamber. It can be a small group of the same people talking to each other. Um, and it's also a medium which um, uh, is uh, easy to be used by... Um, I mean, it's easy to be abusive on Twitter, isn't it? Much more so. I think people um, are much, seem much more um, inclined to be abusive on social media than they would be to somebody's face. Yes. Uh, for example, you get the sort of phenomenon of sort of armchair cyber warriors and cyber <laughs> bullies, and it seems to be a particular problem with misogyny as well, with um, insults and abuse being directed towards women. Particularly, a lot of my women colleagues here, women MPs, um, you know, had terrible abuse and threats uh, made to them on social media. Um, not just in, in, in the context of the Syria vote, but, but, but generally. My advice to them always is to, to simply ignore it, because the people doing this are totally unrepresentative of the vast majority of British people who are very nice, very decent, very tolerant, uh, and would never resort to that sort of level of abuse and threats. No, do, but do I think, you think for it... some of my newer colleagues, um, you know, who aren't, you know, don't have the experience that I have of having been through, you know, difficult times in the past, they they have found it unsettling. Um, uh, but you know, it's just we're all getting used to this new world, aren't we? Do you think it's really representative of social media, though, the, the bullying aspect? Because it, it just seems to me the, the, the mainstream media, the newspapers especially, are giving a lot of credence to the idea that it's all rather horrible out there on, online, and that it doesn't actually represent the bulk of what's going on. No, I think you're right. I think the small minority of people who resort to abuse or threats or bullying on social media are a very small minority. Um, but it's often the case, I mean, you know, on social media, but also in the, in the in off social media, in the sort of non-digital world, that um, it's the people with the loudest voices make the most noise. I mean, that's a simple fact. I remember Labour Party meetings, I could say exactly the same 
about Labour Party meetings in the past and and in and 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 today, where um, you often get a small number of loud mouths uh, who tend to dominate. Um, sometimes aggressively, and the vast majority of mild-mannered, reasonable, moderate people uh, don't make such a loud noise. And I think it's important that anyone who is, you know, feeling um, intimidated or bullied in that way just reminds themselves that the people doing it are, um, as you acknowledged, completely unrepresentative of, of, of people as a whole. And you know, social media is part of our modern life, so we're going to have to learn to live with it. And I also think there's, a, there's, an, there's an extent to which we're still developing social rules around oh, social sure. media. I think yeah. you know, I think yeah. you know, we have developed social rules and social manners, etiquette, if you like, around general behaviour yes, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, over decades and centuries. Whereas I think we're, we're still feeling our way when it comes to social media about what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. And also the role for the law, I mean, uh, uh, in, in regulating uh, uh, behaviour. Um, uh, but um, I don't think there's any point in sort of fretting about it, over, you know, over uh, too much because it's a fact of life. I mean, it's like all of these new developments as they've come in history, there's always been a sort of bit of a panic and a scare about about their impact you know, the arrival of the railways and the arrival of the motor car and um, the arrival of computers generally but um, you know human beings learn uh, through negotiation and um, discussion to to manage these these new phenomena right okay well Ben thank you uh, we've very got, welcome. We're ten, ten minutes which I think is about You're very right. welcome. excellent excellent good well I'm really glad that was helpful